now we are going to the fifth stanza. What did we end the fourth stanza with? Through vedurous glooms, dark places. Glooms are dark places and winding mossy ways where there is absolutely no light. Now, what does he see? What does he say in the uh, fifth stanza? I cannot see what flowers are at my feet. Why? Because they are dark places. See the continuity. How? That is how a good poet organizes his ideas. Actually, they do not consciously organize. It happens. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs. I cannot see what the flowers are in the branches, giving that beautiful fragrance. That is, incense is fragrance. I cannot see the flowers at my feet. I cannot see the flowers from the flowers in the branches. But in embalmed darkness, embalmed means fragrant, full of uh, nice uh, perfumes or balms. But in embalmed darkness, guess each sweet wherewith the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket and the fruit tree wild. See, I cannot see, but I can guess with the help of the, 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 the fragrance of the flowers. Hey, what is the particular tree? Which is this tree? Is it rose? Is it this? Is it that? I do only with the help of my smell. I told you, he is a sensuous poet. I cannot see, but I can smell. And uh, every month according to its season, seasonable month, endows the grass, the thicket. Thicket is thorny shrubs. Thicket is thorny shrubs with dark red fruit, small dark red fruits, that is thicket. And the fruit tree wild, wild fruit trees. There will be so many fruit trees in the forest. I can smell them. Sometimes you can smell fruit also, not just flower. Is it mango or banana or pineapple? You can see. Even if there is no light in the fridge, you open it, you can see why there is something here. White hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine. I tell you why I first read. This is done deliberately in the beginning. When I read, I said eglantine. But now I am reading it as a glantine. I tell you the reason. White hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine. Eglantine also is a sweet shrub, giving beautiful fragrance. Fast fading violets covered up in leaves. Again, uh, violets are flowers. Fast fading violets covered up in leaves. And mid May's eldest child, the coming musk rose full of dewy wine. The murmurous haunt of flies on summer eves. Musk rose is a kind of with the large, is not rose, a kind of rose with the large white flowers smelling of musk. You get musk perfume in the shops, generally meant for men. So, the musk rose gives you that kind of fragrance. Now, the coming musk rose full of dewy wine. The musk rose has a lot of wine or nectar for the flies and bees. The flies and bees, they come, butterflies and all that, to take that nectar. So, the coming musk rose full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. The flies come and mm, that is the murmurous haunt of flies. Now, I tell you, I said eglantine because it rhymes with wine. Eglantine, wine, ein, ein, the rhyme scheme. When I read eglantine, for example, E A G A I N, sometimes some people say, uh, no, some people say again, some people say again, both are correct. I mean, both are used by English people. Again cannot rhyme with another word like disdain. Again rhymes with disdain, again rhymes with hen. So, if I say glantin, 
it cannot rhyme with wine. So, I have to say eglantine. That is why deliberately I first mispronounced it to show you what rhyme scheme is. In every stanza, look at this. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, but an embalmed darkness guess each sweet. Feet, sweet. The similarity of sameness of sound at the end of the line is called rhyme, R H Y M E, R H Y M E, rhyme. Every ode has its own rhyme scheme. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, but an embalmed darkness gets each sweet. Nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs, wherewith the seasonable month endows. The grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, and mid midmost eldest child, white hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine, the coming musk rose full of dewy wine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. You can see the rhyme scheme. Each poem has its own rhyme scheme. The murmurous haunt of flies. What is murmurous haunt? Something to hear? You won't touch the haunt. When the bees come and uh, hover around, you hear the music, the murmuring, right? It refers to sense of hearing. Now, what does he say? Darkling, I listen. I am now again linking you to how the stanzas are linked. Darkling is in the dark, I listen. See that interesting thing. Here is totally dark, I cannot see anything, but I can smell. See, earlier in the stanza, he talks only about smell, but only in the last line he says, murmurous haunt. That is, he is already bringing the sense of hearing. Next, he comes to hearing. Darkling, I listen for many a time, I have been half in love with easeful death. When you are in severe pain, sometimes you say, why this life? Why not die? I always refer to a beautiful expression in Kamala Das's My Story. She uses the expression, delicious death. How can death be delicious? What nonsense? Delicious food, yes. Delicious ice cream, yes. Delicious, uh, what is that? Butterscotch ice cream, yes. What is delicious death? Only someone who is in pain, who seeks death, will find it delicious. Something which is welcome. So, he says, for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death. He introduced himself, my heart aches. And a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk. His heart is aching. His senses are drowsy. They are becoming numb. He says, why not become permanently numb? He very, there is very interesting thing. He is in love with what? Not death. Easeful death. He does not want painful death. He wants just ease away because he saw his brother suffering. Yes, death is inevitable. Death is inevitable. So, die I do not mind, but I want easeful death. See how powerful his uh, imagination is, picturesque imagery is. Darkling I listen and for many a time I have been half in love with easeful death. Look at this. Death and darkness are supposed to go together. Life and light are supposed to go together. So, he says, in the dark I listen and for many a time I have been half in love with useful death, called him soft names in many a mused rhyme. He, I talked about death in my poetry and what is soft name? Nothing to do with software. Gentle and pleasing names. He did not use bad language about death. 
they always said, oh my dear, oh nice, why don't you come and take me, sweet names. Called him soft names in many a muse rhyme to take into the air my quiet breath. See, when we die, what happens? Our breath slowly mixes with the Ananta Vayu, the eternal air. Look at this. To take into the air my quiet breath, I was asking death, oh death, please take me off. Take whatever little oxygen I have and let it not go back. Do not give me oxygen. Take away my carbon dioxide, let me die. To take into the air my quiet breath, now more than ever seems it rich to die. I told you, delicious death. Now he says, rich death. I am thrilled with your music. Oh, Nightingale, I am enjoying your music. And let me happily go. The death will be both use, useful and rich. I am enjoying because Bhagavad Gita says, the soul will remember what it is exposed to at the time of death. When in our movies they show, at the time of death, someone comes and reads Ramayana and some Purana. Because you want to remember God at least at the time of death. Here he says, beautiful music, so rich, rich melody. Rich death, not painful death, accidental death and uh, you are in the hospital for 10 days, people are waiting for you to die and you die. No, he does not want that. He wants useful death. Now he says, this is the right time. It is not only useful, useful but also rich. Now more than ever, it seems it, means it seems. Seems it rich to die, to seize upon the midnight, because the moonlit night I told you, to seize, that is to cease to exist. When? Upon the midnight with no pain, no pain, I am enjoying the music. I am enjoying this fragrance of the flowers. Both my sense of smelling, smell and sense of hearing are richly rewarded to seize upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Ecstasy is overwhelming feeling of joy. Overwhelming feeling of joy. You are enjoying this singing and I am one with you. He earlier says, I am already with thee. With thee is not only physical thee, I am one with you. This is what I have already said. Negative capability. He can feel like Nightingale now. Very interesting point. I am with thee. Now he says, I would like to die while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy. Abroad means out, not abroad foreign countries. So, I mean coming your soul, uh, pouring forth thy soul soulful music in such an ecstasy. Still wouldst thou sing and have ears in vain. You will continue to sing, but slowly I will not be able to enjoy much. To thy requiem become a sword. He wants to die now. Once he dies, your music will continue, I will cease to exist. And to thy high requiem become a sword, I will be just nothing. Requiem is a song which is sung for the repose of the dead. So, he wants to die. I cannot hear your music, but you will sing, I mean, you will have that beautiful uh, requiem for me. Now he has talked about death. See what is he is what he is doing in the next stanza. Thou 
first not born for death immortal bird I am going to die but you are not born for death which bird is he talking about if it is a particular bird it dies anyway see that he has already taken out the bird from its physical shape he is talking about the soul that is coming out of the bird singing throatfully so thou was not born for death who is this thou the song of the bird the singing of the bird not the feathers of the bird not the legs of the bird not the beak of the bird the immortal song of the bird thou was not born for death immortal bird why no hungry generations tread thee down tread that is press or crush with the feet no hungry generations tread thee down the voice i hear this passing night he is no longer talking about one particular nightingale nightingale in general no hungry generations tread thee down the voice i hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown most emperors had clowns with them and both of them heard your song he is not that particular bird which came out of uh, an egg it is the general nightingale that is why it is immortal the voice i hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown perhaps the self same song that found a path through the sad heart of ruth when sick for home she stood in tears amid the alien corn this is a biblical story ruth a moabite comes to israel and she is sick about there was homesickness in her so she is standing in uh, a field and cutting the corn alien corn the corn is not alien the land is alien but that's how the poet talks about uh, different things so she says even this sad heart of ruth heard the same song which the emperor and clown also sang i also heard when sick for home she stood in tears amid the alien corn the same that oft times hath charmed ma- magic casements uh, casements is windows casements is windows opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn fairy lands imaginative lands where you have angels and all that there suddenly the windows are opened because of your song once you open the windows there are problems from the sea but doesn't matter your song is so great now he says of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn forlorn is sad or abandoned are lonely i told you lonely in the beginning he talks about my heart aches and a drowsy numbness pain singular now this loneliness comes back lands for lawn now look at what he is doing just look at the last stanza it starts for long see how one stanza leads to another of perilous seas in fairy lands for long for long the very word is like a bell to toll me back from thee to my soul self Ooh. loneliness sadness abandoned situation ah i am not you he earlier said i am with thee earlier the poet said i am with you i am you now he says na 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 i am not you my soul only self is separate and there is a concept called toll the bell tolls in british english villages if the, the church bell is tolled at a regular slow speed means something has happened for whom the bell tolls if someone is dead they give that kind of thing so that's kind of thing for long for long the very word is like a bell to toll me back from the to my soul self 
Now, the word forlorn shows, I am not with you, I am not you, you and I are separate. So, I have my own soul self. So, I come back. Adieu, goodbye. The fancy cannot cheat so well as she is famed to do deceiving elf. Fancy, you fancy as if you are something. You fancy you are nightingale. You fancy you can sing that immortally. You fancy there is no pain. No. Fancy cannot take you too far unless you become totally mad. There are some lunatics who say, I am King Ashoka. The other fellow says, no sir, I am King Ashoka. He is nonsense. He is Akbar only. Are? That kind of thing. So, fancy, imagination. Here now take fancy as imagination. This kind of imagining yourself to be something is not that permanent. It cannot cheat so well. So, add you the fancy cannot cheat so well as she is famed to do deceiving elf. Elf is a small mischievous being. So, this uh, uh, fancy is uh, referred to as deceiving elf. Add you, add you. Now, look at this. Thy plaintive anthem fades. Now, he talks about plaintive anthem. Plaintive is mournful. Earlier, he was talking about all happiness without problems. Now, he is sad. So, he thinks some of these things can be, the, the tunes could be plaintive. Add you, add you, that is goodbye, goodbye. Your mournful musical composition disappears gradually, fades disappears. See, even when your imagination is over, you can still hear something, slowly it goes. Past the near meadows, over the still stream. Now, what is he doing? He is coming back from the forest. Earlier, he was in dim forest. When he is coming back from the forest, see that. Past the near meadows, over the still stream, up the hillside and now it is buried deep in the next valley glades. I am going, your sound also is fading. Was it a vision or a waking dream? Now he says, why I was with the bird, I was enjoying all the music, there was total darkness in the forest, I could only smell the flowers, I can only um, listen to sounds of the humming bees and all that. What happened? What happened? Was it a vision? Was it a waking dream? Fled is that music. He slowly faded away. Now he says, it has fled. Fled is running away very fast. Fading is going away gradually. That means, when he is coming back from that kind of uh, charmed condition, he was in a kind of uh, imagine, in a condition of a uh, lot of high imagination. Once the ima imagination is gone, hey, hey, where is the music? It's gone. Do I wake or sleep? What do I do? What am I doing? Should I now remain awake or go back to sleep? That he is not fed with that music. Gone. What happened to me? A poet, he actually happened. He listened to Nightingale sitting in his house. He enjoyed that music. He imagined, see, actually, people who have some problems, they try to get away from his their problems with the help of some distractions. And being a great poet, I mean a, a gifted poet, he could export himself into the 
life of a singing nightingale. A nightingale, which is not a nightingale or the nightingale, nightingale, singing nightingale. It is the song that matters for him. And he, he just lifted himself to that. That word forlorn, he said, hey, what am I doing? Am I dreaming? Too much of imagination. It doesn't work. Life is back to square one. He is addressing the nightingale. And mind you, what happened to Keats was one thing. Kavita Vastu. A subject matter. What Keats has created is the Kavya Vastu. The thesis. He has created a poem. So, thank you very much. Let thank us you, see sir. whether we will meet sometime later to teach another poem. Thank you.